welcome back to Do News. I am your host, the King of Do. We're going to take a quick look at the markets and dive into the news because there is so much going on today. I couldn't even try to cover it all. Um, so some really good, high-quality news coming your way, guys. So buckle up, sit tight, and wherever you're listening, I hope you're having a good day. But let's get to it. Uh, Bitcoin up about 6% and Ethereum blowing up on more than just one news um, breaking on Ethereum today. And we'll cover that. And then other than that, in the top 10, Stratus making a little bit of a recovery. Um, everything else is kind of just trailing with Bitcoin. We definitely have some more double digits down as you, uh, as you move down the charts and things like that. But that's basically the, the big players and what's going on today. Uh, but just a, just a, uh, a day of green. Um, as you guys know, everything kind of just trails Bitcoin and follows Bitcoin. So when Bitcoin's green, everything is green. When Bitcoin's red, everything's red. And... Um, so Bitcoin making some recovery. Um, it did bounce off of a resistance twice. Um, so it tested it twice and pretty hard and um, bounced off it twice. So we may actually be looking at either a consolidation or a change in market. Um, it's hard to say um, what the world is believing when it comes to the uh, Bitcoin um, craziness that could be going down on August 1st. Um, but uh, things in general, the sentiment in the market, you can kind of feel it changing a little bit. But um, we'll just have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. I think there'll be plenty of good buying opportunities in the next few weeks. Um, so make sure that um, you don't blow all of your money at one time because you still might get a better deal later and you just don't want to have that regret. So it's never a bad idea to just buy a little bit at a time every time it dips. Um, because uh, it, it just feels good getting a deal <laughs> and you have less regrets. All right, guys, so let's move right into the news. This is really big news that I was not covered well whatsoever. Um, and we'll have to see what comes of it. But essentially, there's a proposal to um, delay the difficulty bomb on uh, Ethereum. If you're not familiar with how all that works, basically, Ethereum becomes harder to mine. Um, that's the simple way to put it. it. It takes more power and resources to get a reward. Um, and so basically it becomes less profitable over time. And so they call it a bomb. Um, so <laughs> uh, we all know that we're not going to be able to mine like Ethereum forever, right? Um, we're going to move to proof of stake someday. But this is basically them saying, hey, it's farther out than you thought. Okay. So right now they're, they're going to be pushing out potentially the difficulty bomb. And um, that's really, really good news um, because that's probably on a lineup closer uh, to about the time when we need to switch. If the bomb happened too early, then, you know, they like, lose too many people that are mining. and It's just this weird balance they have to play. Um, they have to still reward the people who are supporting the platform. This stuff is so early on, and even though, it, like, a lot of people made millions, and there's a lot of people mining, and there's this mining rush, and you can't buy a graphics card anywhere. Sorry, gamers. I'm one, too. I feel for you. Even though that's all going on, right? Um, it's still super small. We're still really early on in this stuff. And so the people who are the early adopters, people who are here first, uh, you know, the people who are here super first, the innovators, are millionaires. Let's get real. Um, there are people who are mining, like, not one ether a day. More like maybe hundreds or thousands at one point. They're doing just fine. Um, so, anyhow, but we're here, we're supporting the network, uh, miners still deserve to be rewarded, so they're trying to balance that out, um, it's very important to the ecosystem, as you guys know, miners have a big say, um, as you guys can maybe see in this article, if you're trying to read it, um, we're still going to be looking at a reward change, potentially next month, and it's a big one, um, it's essentially going to go from five blocks to three, um, not quite 50%, but um, a very large uh, drop um, in rewards uh, because it is a little kind of out of control right now to where, you know, you can't buy a graphics card anywhere in America um, because they're all bought out. Anyhow, um, moving on. NEM library. Excited about NEM, guys. I keep telling you guys to take a look at NEM, learn about NEM. It's a top 10 blockchain for a reason, but it's the one that no one gets excited about. It's just something that, like, people don't get it, they don't understand it, and it does take a lot of energy and effort to understand it. It's getting easier, though, 
um, as they are in massively and quickly increasing their marketing efforts um, here in America in particular. But um, anyhow, NIM just reminds me of Ethereum a year ago right now, where you have these really cool projects like the NIM library, where you know you've got individuals out there truly supporting it organically uh, in order to help adoption, and um, that's just really fantastic. So essentially, what NIM is a NIM library rather um, is um, a project to reduce the learning curve of the NIM blockchain. And they want to basically, um, they basically have created some uh, testing software and things like that um, to allow programmers to use the programming language called TypeScript. Um, and essentially, it's an easier language. Um, so that's really, really exciting. And um, I'm stoked. I'm stoked to see this kind of stuff. And it's star I'm starting to see it everywhere with NIM. It just it's, it feels good. And there are a lot of other coins where I feel this way too right now. There's so many things out there right now, and I'm like, wow, this is just like Ethereum a year ago. And so it's real exciting to be a part of that, knowing that like next summer, um, uh, some of these things could be um, so much bigger than what it is today. Um, and we can only imagine what they'll be uh, further in the future. So uh, really excited about that, and uh, just wanted to share you with uh, share with you guys my excitement, I guess, about the NIM library. Um, Moving on, the Ethereum Alliance. So, this uh, obviously is huge news. The Enterprise Ethereum Alliance um, had some huge announcements today. And um, even with the huge announcements today, I'll be honest, I don't think that this news is really why it's up so much. Because Ethereum is really breaking out right now. I actually think it has more to do with what I talked about earlier in regards to the difficulty bomb. And that's the real strong, honest opinion from the King of Do right there. And that I have a I, I believe very strongly that miners are still very dominant in all cryptocurrencies um, where mining is done. There's pros and cons to that, as you guys can see with Bitcoin, but People vote with their mining power, and they vote with their dollars, right? Uh, processing power, in a way, is money. If you're not, if you don't understand that concept, you need to seek to try to understand why um, a processor is money. Uh, to put it into layman's terms, time is money, right? What does a processor do for you? Saves a lot of time and does a lot of computation for you. Um, essentially, processors are creating value all the time. Even right now as you listen to me, there are processors around the world sending you this valuable information, this this uh, news to you um, in a very compelling way. And it, it's incredible that these, these uh, little pixels are populating on your screen and you can actually see and you can hear as well. Uh, it's really, really mind-boggling. Uh, I don't think anyone could have imagined this type of technology um, when, uh, you know, back in the 80s, but here we are, like, it's no big deal. So when you look at this blockchain stuff, it gets you really excited because someday maybe it's no big deal um, that everything's decentralized. Anyhow, mining is just like voting with money. It's uh, uh, And so miners have a lot of say and a lot of power. Um, and um, I think that the difficulty bond is a... Is a confidence builder for longer term investments people who have made investments in ethereum and things like that with their mining rigs things like that um and then also just fiscally um it just it just bodes well um for where the majority of the money lies and uh really the, the whales are typically miners um as well and have mining facilities so anyhow that's my personal opinion now Let's get to the hype. Let's get excited. You guys ready to get excited? MasterCard has signed on. That's huge. Uh, in five years, will we be, you know, able to use our MasterCard to pay in the Ether? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I still don't like people calling Ethereum like a cryptocurrency. It truly is a blockchain technology. 
but these financial institutions are just jumping on board. Um, I assume that they have other things they want to actually use it for. Um, using smart contracts in the financial industry would be freaking sweet. It would make me feel better about a lot of things that are going on there as far as my safety. Um, I feel like even a private blockchain um, can help solve a lot of that. Uh, so it's interesting to see MasterCard sign up for a decentralized blockchain. Um, so, but at the end of the day, MasterCard signing on, that is a huge deal. Um, Cisco being the other giant player. Um, Cisco is unbelievably big, guys. Huge in hardware, huge in software. Huge news to have Cisco come on. Uh, I don't think the average person uh, knows how big they are. Um, but I think that this is going to end up being one of the core players, the core movers in the uh, potential for Ethereum to truly go mainstream. The amount of processing power that Cisco has access to, owns, develops, creates, um, the, their ability to support the ecosystem, to build onto it, um, this is just huge. It's so huge. Um, I, I would, I'm ready to go buy some Cisco stock. <laughs> That's just me personally, but, um, you know, to see companies that big recognize the technology and then join um, is really, really exciting. Now, there are some other really large companies, but Cisco in particular, um, if you understand Cisco, their entire suite of service offerings and what they actually do, um, it's a big, big deal, Cisco being here. Um, besides that, we also have the, uh, the Indian government on board, which I, it fascinates me. Um, they have a lot of currency problems over there, but we actually have a government on board. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice if your government got on board? That'd be pretty cool. Not going to happen here in the United States whatsoever. <laughs> Let's be real. We are just so stuck in our ways. Um, you know, it's funny because we're going to talk more about that um, here in a little bit. So keep that in mind. This is super cool, but also super weird. But super cool. Um, I was talking with a gentleman this this uh, last weekend, actually asking him, you know, do you have any ideas on how to incorporate a game into crypto mining? And these guys have kind of sort of done that. It's called Hash Rush. It's a game where essentially um, you have your colony. There's three factions to choose from. You join your team or your colony and then you have to like you actually mine and you control your little guys. It's a real time strategy game. What's interesting though is actually what you're doing is they actually have a mining farm. The company does. Right? The company that um, called uh, what is it called? I don't know if I found the company name. Um, but they're located in Latvia. But Essentially, they have mining rigs, just like any miner out there. Maybe you have one, right? And they just have them stacked up in their office. If you, basically, based on your score, on, on how good you are at the game and you know where you are in the leaderboards, you actually will earn hash power. Like, no joke, you actually are earning their hash power. In the same way in Genesis mining, you go and you pay for a contract. Here, you just get to play a video game. Getting paid to play a video game? That's the dream, right? I thought I had to be an eSports professional to do that, or uh, be on Twitch. But it uh, looks like that I can just play Hash Rush and I can retire. Who's with me? Anyone want to join my faction? Let's do it. Let's see if we can retire playing Hash Rush. I don't think they have that many miners. Um, we'd have to be pretty good, I think. And they would have to have a lot of mining machines. 
Anyhow, super fascinating, some cool art styles and things like that. Go check them out. Hash Rush Game on Twitter. Pretty cool little project. I'm a fan. I hope to see them at PAX. I'd love to see them at PAX. Moving on, uh, a gentleman posted on Reddit they fell for a phishing attack, and I just wanted to make you guys aware. Um, he got an email, essentially, and basically he, uh, he went to the link and yada, yada, yada. He didn't pay attention to the link. Guys, if you get an email from anywhere with a link in it, this isn't just crypto related, but like, view the source before you click it. If possible, don't click. Go to your browser and type it in. Uh, the guy went to the wrong uh, my Ether wallet and basically lost 1.5 Ether. Um, that's not too bad of a loss, right? Could have been a lot worse. Um, be careful, guys. Just be careful. Public service announcement, as always. I do that for you guys. So just be looking out for those emails. Don't click them. Don't click them. Um, the Korean Digital Currency Bill is set to launch shortly, uh, but they're still having some struggles about how they want to do this in South Korea. Uh, it's really fascinating. Um, if you're not aware, South Korea actually uh, legalized Bitcoin uh, for international transfers. I think it was last month. Not very, very recently. Um, and so South Korea is just like, they're making like strides. You know, they're actually getting this stuff done. These guys are, like, going in and making it happen. And meanwhile, in America, uh, we're spending, a, what was it, a billions of dollars on a task force to do something in regards to digital crime or something. You know, we're just, we're just throwing money around trying to control what can't be controlled and chasing things, like, how about we like come up with new solutions, right? That's that's what I want to see. I want to see some leadership in this country step up and say, "Hey, you know, the world's changing, and we're either going to change like the rest of the world is, right? We are. We're just sitting here doing nothing, and it's getting really frustrating. European countries, Asian countries, um, everyone else is doing something about this and getting like supporting it." Trying to create laws to, to attract investors, to attract development. And, um, you know, what are, what are we attracting? I don't even know. I don't even know what's going on. And uh, that's not to, uh, I'm not trying to even pinpoint a particular party or political view. That's not what I do on this channel. But um, it's amazing to me with how huge our government is that not one person is raising their hand and making noise. Um, you know, if, if, if you wanted to get a lot of votes, maybe that might be a good way, because the whole crypto space here is looking for someone to support the goodness of blockchain technology and not criticize ridicule and try to um, tax you to hell on it. And so it's just really, really fascinating. Um, it's really, really fascinating what's going on in the world. As we sit here and we do nothing in America, I continue to see news week after week after week of just real progress happening, real talks. You know, this isn't just fantasy land. This is real stuff happening out there. So, um, anyhow, a little bit of frustration there, but you guys need to know this. You need to know what's going on in the rest of the world, right? Uh, that's the whole point of almost this cryptocurrency and blockchain stuff is that, you know, it really is... Um, decentralize everything decentralizing everything in a way that is like do countries even matter anymore do borders even matter anymore at what you know at what point does it even matter you know um we're probably a long ways from that let's be very real we're a long ways from anything like that ever happening uh we're still all humans i don't ever see any type of utopia uh society or anything like that but um, there are certain things like currency where that's a very real possibility. I don't see anything wrong with that. The world is getting so small so fast. So um, this was a fantastic article. Switching gears, Chaincoin, guys. Chaincoin. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know what Chaincoin is, and it's okay if you don't. It's been in the news because it's blown up. 
Um, it saw an 8,000% increase in less than a month. You could have bought it for five cents a month ago. It's at four dollars. Um, some people out there probably own some and don't even remember they own it. And they're super rich right now and don't even realize it. <laughs> That's the funny part. But Chaincoin is really, really fascinating. Why did it blow up? This is really fascinating, guys. Basically, there was a gentleman who got on his YouTube channel, and his, his channel is called High on Coins. Um, and the guy's name is Max Lee. Cool dude, whatever. Seems cool. And he basically convinced the Slack community to go ahead and like prop up the value. Like he literally is saying, let's pump it. So, okay, we're going to pump. And the difference is, is this. This is, the, this is so awesome. Um, he asked his community not to dump, only to pump. He asked them to pump and hold. This article is pretty fascinating. I, I really, really enjoyed this article on this site called Store of Value. Um, and uh, basically, this guy who wrote the article, he, he, he understands what went on here and uh, really goes into it. Um, and his conclusion is that he actually believes Max Lee, this gentleman right here, he actually believes that he is being really authentic. He actually wanted to do this. He believed that if we could just buy the coins and hold it and drive the price up, that we will get enough mainstream attention, right? We're talking about it right now, right? That he would get enough attention that it would garner support in developers and it could start moving forward again. Here's the thing, guys. There's nothing innovative about Chaincoin. Absolutely nothing. There's actually nothing being developed on it currently. Um, the, you know, the, uh, the last tweet was months ago on their Twitter. They haven't made any changes to their GitHub for about three months now. And, yeah. And basically, it's failed to meet all of its Q2 goals on their actual official roadmap. So if you take all of those things into account, um, there's not much really happening here. I'll be honest, guys. Like, go. Oh my gosh, there's so many. There's so many little coins out there that I can't call them uh, crap coins or garbage coins or whatever. I can't do that because they're are actually legitimate people developing on them. Just because they're worth basically nothing, um, that's different than no one developing on it. So, anyhow. Um, at the end of the day, uh, though, guys, um, this isn't sustainable. Uh, this isn't going to work. Um, basic market economics will tell you that um, this is going to crash. Um, so, if you own some, get out. I know that you may have a master node and you may be making a lot of money. If that's the case, um, I hope you're like staying up all night watching the market because it's going to get dumped. It is natural. There is no such... You, you, you can manipulate markets, but the market, what? The market always wins, right? It will always win. So... All right, uh, moving on real quick. I, I found this fantastic thing on Steemit. I love Steemit. And this is why. Here's a good example of why we love Steemit. If you guys want to know why I'm always talking about Steemit, let's get right to this because uh, it's going a little long here today. But there's a lot of news. I hope this is good stuff for you guys. This is really cool. So hang, bear with me. Stay with me. This guy t did, a, did a cool little analysis that I like, and I think it's a really good indicator. Essentially, he goes on Google and he's looking at the keywords associated to buying 
a particular coin. And he takes a look at the top 10. And, you know, basically, we're looking at these and he's asking himself, you know, is is there interest or is there more interest? Is it, Are we having the second second coming, the second wave? Um, and you guys can see here, this is Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin's king. You can actually see exactly what's happened over the last few months, right? Tons of people buying. We hit an all-time high. And then it leveled off. Remember when we leveled off? And then, you know, things started heading down. <laughs> Funny how, how it follows the market, right? But look at this. Heading back up. This is the first, this right here is the first time it's headed back up. Um, and if you actually go and you look at the actual Bitcoin chart, it almost looks exactly like this shape. Um, very interesting. Not going to say that it's like a one to one thing and you can always look at this, but it's interesting. But let's go through this and take a look at some other ones. Here, right here, we've got Ethereum right here. Look at that. Heading up as well. Here we've got Ripple. Headed up as well. Very interesting. Litecoin. Consolidation, no real change. Oh! Their price has basically been consolidating with no real change. This one is like, wow. Ethereum Classic. Very interesting an aggressive trend upward. And here it is, guys. This is the one that you should probably start asking yourself. Why haven't I Googled how to buy them? Because this is it historically, guys. <laughs> no one is searching how to buy them. No one. It's because they don't have any marketing and they don't they don't have anything in English and you know half the world doesn't understand what it is and it's hard to understand it's but guess what all of their efforts are paying off people are responding and saying well how do I buy them right we go to Google Google uh, you know um, if you're religious you pray um, if you're not you pray to Google you go to Google and you ask Google for things and you ask Google for wisdom and um, it is the modern day God for many people is, is Google and people are going there and asking it, it, it's definitely a direct indicator it's not it's it's very very close uh, indicator to people showing interest and wanting to purchase them and in why why all of a sudden there this is the, you can't see it on your screen guys there's this itty bitty bump right here this any little bump right here is basically what happened over the last few months, and that was like the peak. And here we have a, 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 uh, an explosion upward, an explosion. Um, it, it's because of all the marketing they're doing. You know, they got their YouTube channel up and things like that. Um, it's very interesting. I mean, if you try to go and you compare this data back up here with like Ethereum. Um, a year ago. I mean, the, the type of number that it's showing as far as the interest um, is just incredible. Um, explosion uh, in interest here. So, then we got Dash moving upward as well. Dash could actually start moving to maybe a new all time high. Uh, it could potentially. Um, the IOTA. Um, kind of, it had that huge peak because it kind of came out of nowhere. People are like, what is this? How do I buy it? Um, it came back to Earth, and, you know, people are still interested in it. Monero on the downtrend, not surprising. Guys, I think, uh, I'm not seeing enough out of Monero. Uh, this is a personal opinion. I am not a financial advisor, of course, but Monero right now on the downtrend. I'm very interested in uh, Zcash and Pivx exponentially than Monero. Um, I think Monero has a, has a place, but uh, it may not last for long. And then, and then last, Vitericium, uh, getting up to the top 10 now. Um, massive, massive increase upward in interest and continuing to climb. So, um, continuing to gain interest on Vitericium now. Anyhow, very fascinating. Is this a sign? Is this the real sign that we are starting to recover? 
um, as a market. Is the money really pouring in now? You guys got to understand. Do you understand the correlation here? That these are normal people typing this in? Right? You get that, right? So these are, this is normal everyday people saying, I am going, how do I buy this thing? I want to buy it now. How do I buy it? Um, so, I'd, you know, when, when we talk about market capitalization and we're looking at the market cap, and let's go take a look at that real quick. Currently, we're at $83 billion. When we talk about that number, um, we always have to ask ourselves, how much of it that is like truly like real, like normal people? You know, you've got manipulation and uh, things like that, money moving in and out. But how much of that money is truly here for the long term? Um, how much is here for the next day, the next month? We Guys, we've seen tens of billions drop in in a day before. So, you know, we always are asking ourselves that. But um, when you see indicators like that, that means that every day average money is moving into the market. It means that all of the awareness from the last few months is still like out there. It's still happening. People are still talking about this stuff. And it's still super exciting to most people who don't have a clue. And there's a ton of people who um, now know someone that has made a ton of money um, in these markets. And they're saying, um, how would you do that? Can I get involved? And, and they're starting to find out that there's so much opportunity in this space. Um, we Guys, we still could be at a trillion dollars um, this time next year. Um, that would be an aggressive, a really aggressive prediction. Um, in two years, very likely. So that's kind of where we're at. And uh, that's kind of what's happening in the market. So you guys kind of see it. I see it. I feel it. When you read the news every day and you're in the forums and you're digging, you kind of get the feeling you can get the vibe. And things are changing. Now, could we come back tomorrow and everything be in the red and everyone panic? Yes. Could, could we get some horrible bad news after we just got all this good news? Yes. It could be crazy bad, actually. Um, there's so much that could actually uh, be bad, like hard regulations or um, hard taxation, um, you know, scams and uh, Bitcoin not, not forking properly or, you know, things like that. Anything is possible in this space. It's going to be a crazy roller coaster, um, but you guys got to remember that we're looking at it every day. You're listening to me right now because you're all about it and you want to know as much as you can and you're into it every single day. You're thinking about it every day. You're excited about it. But guys, um, the dreams and aspirations that you have will not happen in two years. But at the same time, you're underestimating what we could do in five and ten years. So it is going to take time. But when it comes to fruition, it will blow your freaking mind. And it's really hard to be patient. I even get really frustrated, you know, sometimes just because I'm I'm human. And I'm just like, can we just like go in the future? I guess the worst part about the future is I'm old and my body hurts and uh, my daughter grows up and that's the scariest thing in the world. Um, but, I, you know, I want to have a fast forward button, but I can't really get one, right? But I like one just to see what happens. Because even even money aside, any opportunity to make money, guys, it's about like like some of the stuff's really going to disrupt the world. And I believe there's a lot of it in a very positive way. And that's why I get excited about it. There's just so much uh, corruption and evil in the world, just like blatantly obvious. And some times people admit it that there's, there's oh, yeah, I screwed all those people. You know, like. Um, I'm really looking forward to, to having a little bit more trust in the world, and uh, that's a good thing uh, for everybody. So, All right, guys, so that is it for me. If you liked this content, there was so much good content. I thought it was good. I enjoyed bringing you the news today. If you like it, make sure you subscribe. Please subscribe. Um, give me a thumbs up. Please leave a comment. Tell me what you found interesting, what you want to know more about so that I can do a better job bringing you guys what you want to know. And um, as always, um, follow me over on Steemit, because Steemit is an amazing community. You find super interesting articles and uh, really deep insight, like what I shared with you today, I found on Steemit. So make sure you go over to Steemit and join that community. 
And while you're there, you can give me a follow, and you can get all of this content. Um, you can follow my blog on there, and uh, it would be awesome to have you join the party. Anyhow, so that is it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know it was a little long, but hey, I've been taking some time off to do some other things. So I hope you guys can give me that extra time, and I hope I made it worth your while. And until next time, I am the King of Dew. May the Force be with you.